Now we're back on the open road today with a profile that looks remarkably like stages one and two. Setting out from the beach in La Vol, it's 195 kilometres long with just a single fourth category climb and it's set up for a classic chase and catch between the breakaway and the sprinters teams. Once the catch is made, there's what amounts to a four kilometre long home straight, so timing might be as important as pure speed in the final sprint. And it would be a contradiction, an internal contradiction in terms, having put Thomas de Ghent on the front, a uh, lot for Lotto Sudal to do the early pace setting and bring things back, then to not contribute, and there's a crash there, right in the middle of the bunch, and that has fractured the bunch in halves, and it's outside three kilometres to go, 5k to go, so if any GC racers are hurt or caught up by that, that will have consequences. A uh, large number of Sunweb riders brought down by that, so you're looking at, in the first instance, for Tom Dumoulin, amongst others. I but fear that Adam, uh, Adam Yates might be back there as well, because I've seen an image before where he's quite close to the back. Here's uh, Rigoberto Uran's team, and he's being paced back now. So that's, uh, he's potentially the big loser of the day, and don't forget, it was outside five kilometres. So they're going to have to have another team time trial in consecutive days if Rigoberto Uran is going to not lose any time, having bravely ridden yesterday. That's potentially trouble for Uran. Yeah, and it was uh, Langeveld, who was the, the rider before, who was down, who can't contribute to that chase. I think that's Van Mark. We can see the, the right EF rider at the back, who won't be aware yet by the science fit, because they drop back every rider at this moment to help Uran. But uh, that's going to be a frantic chase for them at this point in the race is the worst possible. As you can see, the leadouts will now start soon, in which case Peloton's just going to increase its speed while that e Team EF chase is just going to go slower normally. Little pinch in the road. This is the last switch of direction through four kilometres to go. Meanwhile, about 400 metres further up the road, 25 seconds further up the road. Let's not forget there are four riders who have not been caught yet. 3K to go for the Quartetta riders, 23 seconds all sorts of outcomes are still possible here. It's too close to call, but with one team in its entirety working now, they've gone early and they might just bring this all back. There you go, Team, team EF have made it back on, so that's, that'll be a big relief to them, although they're, they're close, but they should be safe now. And there's uh, uh, Dario Lanza as well. He's had a bit of a day swinging off the back occasionally due to those couple of instances. I think he was caught up in that previous crash. Now, these four can't play any games. They've just got to keep going. If they hesitate for a moment, they're going to be swamped. It's long and it is straight and it is flat all the way to the finish line here as Sky get on the front now, Team Sky. So Dimension Data find themselves with allies to work with here. And they're through three kilometres to go now, so uh, unusual perhaps at this point to see Luke Rowe right on the front with Geraint Thomas on his wheel. Well, I think that might be because of the news of Uran. You may as well take this opportunity and try and get some, some more time. They might not be aware that he's almost got back onto the back of the peloton. So though he was there, there were still some gaps in front. And there you see the pink helmets. They're moving up on the right-hand side of the peloton. So Uran has made it back on. So that was a good bit of teamwork and a little bit of luck. So Sky with two riders uh, just on the left-hand side, but uh, the very, very front of the race, that's Ilnor Zakarin also chasing Ooh. on. So he's another big potential loser on the day. And they've got, uh, don't forget, they're a team who are trying to look after Marcel Kittel as well. So he's got limited resources. Just one rider, Robert Kizilowski, his mountain domestique, is doing the work there to try and pilot uh, Zakarin back in. Kittel has got through that. All the big sprinters, don't think any of them were delayed. They're too far up towards the front of the race. And here are the sprinters' trains now, and they are closing in on this group. Catch is imminent now, and it's Dimension Data on the left-hand side. Cavendish in the white helmet there. Still got four men, three or four men at least in front of him. They're going to be caught. They're not even at the Flamme Rouge yet. It has been a brave, valiant affair. And Guillaume van Kiersburg has not given up yet. There is, of course, the prize for the combativité still to go effectively in this situation for the last man standing and Surely that has to go to the Belgian now from Wanty Group Gobert. The other three give up. Van Kiersburg pushes on. And he has yet to be caught. He is a huge motor, Van Kiersburg. And he's giving himself a chance and he's creating yet another problem for these tired lead-out men working for Mark Cavendish to neutralise. This goes to show the power of the peloton. When they do start to work, it just comes back so quickly. And there you go. Here you go. The lead-out really is beginning. They've gone from a long way out, Dimension Data, but they've had full commitment. Now they're going to leave Mark Cavendish, I think, a little bit far around. Out, but at least he's perfectly well positioned. He's not going to be interrupted by all the action that's going on behind him. He can choose the, the challenge. He's still got Mark Renshaw there, yep. but he's only got one rider in front of him, Mark Renshaw. I think it's Edward Burson Hagen, then comes Renshaw, then comes Cavendish. That's the order. There's Renshaw, and behind them, Trek Segafredo moving John Dagenkolb closer. This is the sprint. Dylan Gronewagen's well placed on the wheel of the Group Armour FTJ train that switches over to the right hand side. Christoph as well in the European Champions jersey on the left hand side of the road. Renshaw now has Cavendish, and Cavendish picks the wheel well of 
the lead out man for uh, John Dadenkov. Cavendish beautifully poised here, cruising Cavendish, but on the left hand side of the road, Fernando Gaviria now with uh, Max Richese about to unleash him. And he has Peter Sagan in the green jersey on his wheel on the right hand side. Well, they're beaten. The left hand side has it, and it's Gaviria in cruise control. Gaviria waiting, waiting, yet to pull the trigger. Sagan on his wheel. Everyone lined up behind them. They switch, and it's over on the left hand side. And now Gaviria goes. Dadenkov trying to get on terms. Sagan too. Kripal coming down the middle. That is a live threat to Gaviria. Kripal hits the front. Kripal just about has it. The Colombian comes back again. Sagan with a late lunge. Three riders across the line. Perhaps it was Gaviria who just about got there first. But three will have to go to a photo finish there. That was a brilliant sprint. Well, that was an incredible sprint from Gaviria. Here we go, you can see. So there goes Greipel moving up. And then Gaviria, at first, you think, is going to be beaten by Greipel. Now look at Sagan, jumps across. Then the three of them, just there in a, their own race. Look at that. And it just doesn't, Gaviria just gets around. Now Sagan coming out quickly. Wow, yes, yeah, so that's uh, Gaviria, Sagan, Greipel. But Greipel just went a little bit too early, but Gaviria hats off. There's the photo finish. A wheel from Gaviria to Sagan, a lot less between Sagan and Greipel. Behind those three, Dylan Groenewegen and Marcel Kittel completed the top five. Mark Cavendish came in 21st. Fernando, congratulations. Andre Greipel came at you very fast, but you seemed to accelerate twice at the end there. You kept your speed for a long time. Yeah, really difficult sprint because the, the ray goes so far, but OK. We are a strong team, we work all day for the victory, and I'm really happy with the with the job from the guys. I'm really happy with the with my legs because in the final, really strong. Andre Gepil, also Peter, but I go more fast and take the victory. It was a very long sprint and very nearly a successful one. Yeah, exactly. I went early because I wanted to go for the win and don't hesitate. Uh, for a moment, I thought I have him, but yeah, I uh, had 100 meters to go, one gear left, so I put it on the 11, and yeah, then somehow he was a bit faster. I don't know if I was second or third, but it doesn't matter. We wanted to win. You're smiling, so I guess you're encouraged by that result. <sighs> well, exactly. Uh, uh, I was a bit angry with myself two days ago because I hesitated. Today, I wanted to make it better. Things look more promising for Mark Cavendish today, although he was already somewhat back in the pack before Dylan Groenewegen cut across him. Mark, it looks like you got your hands full. You also had your hands full in the sprint. What went right? What went wrong today? Uh, the team were brilliant um, for the last kilometres. Uh, like actually, what we wanted, they executed. They planned to be on the front. We knew what to take on, even though it was a headwind. So we thought, we'll do that, and then... Uh, Another team will come in. Um, once you weren't like so fast, once you, with a block headwind, once you're not in a wheel, it was just like your watt went double, you know. And I think as Craig Anderson come in, pushed me out of wrenches, we were sort of better to go on his wheel than to be in the wind, you know. So I thought, okay, he'll go. And then he started to go round Renshaw, then Renshaw started to lead out. Then they, I thought the left would be closed, it'd come over the right. Got a gap open on the left, and Quickstep went on the left. And I'm blocked, <laughs> technically I'm blocked by my old lead out man, not in a, like, okay, that's going to look on paper, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, ooh, like do you know what I mean? Like, it was, it was my own fault, I shouldn't have really been there, but uh, it was luck of the draw, but like I said, it was going to be hard to beat them, so um, they've got another stage in, and uh, I'm left holding the baby. <laughs> Two sprints out of two then for Fernando Gaviria, of those he's been around to contest, although he was pushed today by Greipel and Sagan. Sagan's second place keeps him in the green jersey. Gaviria's win moves him to within four points. No change in the top ten today. Still BMC's two vans, three seconds ahead of Geraint Thomas in third place. And the gap's the same through Tom de Moulin to Rigoberto Uran, although Uran had a late scare and had to chase back on after the crash. A lot of other riders fell back today, though, clearing things out for the overall contenders who start to populate the placings from 11 to 20. Ilnor Zakarin was the one team leader to lose time because of the late crash and a significant amount of it, 59 seconds. Roman Bardet lost one of his key men for the mountains altogether. Axel Dumont broke his collarbone. For BMC, though, Greg Van Avermaet's yellow jersey didn't seem to weigh too heavy and didn't entail a huge amount of work at the front. 
a straightforward looking stage, but none of these early stages are straightforward. No, it's always easy, like we said before, uh, to protect the jersey, you have to be, have a little bit of luck. We uh, used a lot of energy to stay in front with me and Richie, but it was worth it, I think. Uh, again, uh, a big crash, but probably a, a lot of splits again. Uh, but we were up there really good, and uh, I think for us it was the perfect day. Uh, no time loss, Richie was up there, and we can uh, look forward to tomorrow. Yeah, and tomorrow is a kind of classic -y kind of hard day. What's your role going to be, Greg? Because under other circumstances, it could be one for you. Yeah, we will see how it goes. I think uh, we have a strong team. Uh, me and Richie can go up there, I think. We still have Caruso and TJ uh, also in the back. We are also pretty good at this kind of parkour. So we have a strong team, and uh, hopefully we can do a good result tomorrow also in the stage.